It's nice to be in the cool. Uh, we did have a lightning uh, strike today nearby, close enough to force us off the field. And uh, so we got off the field. We weren't quite ready to go in the indoor. We're, we're, we're within days. We have a certificate of occupancy right now. Uh, so it's a matter of when field turf finishes their job of getting the field just right, then we'll be able to use it. And that, it, it'll probably be this week more than likely, but we'll, we'll see. I don't want to make any wild predictions, but it looks really good to be in here before the week's over. Uh, but uh, as I was mentioning earlier, lightning, uh, the lightning uh, prediction system thought it might be coming. So the horn went off, we went in, and I don't know, we might have been in there 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then the all clear horn came, so we went back out and uh, got everybody warmed up again and got to practice. We, I thought we practiced better before the horn blew. Um, when we went back out, we were a little sluggish, I thought. Uh, at least offensively, defense didn't seem to bother them much. Um, but I think we lost our focus a little bit throwing and catching. Like our seven-on-seven -seven drill, had guys open, might have missed a guy by an inch or, or th hit through it to an open guy and he drops it. And I mean, not every time, but just too many times. We're, we're not going to be great unless we can consistently throw and catch. So a little bothersome there, but... Uh, Overall, it was it was a good practice. We got it in, and uh, that that was nice. So, with that, I'll let y'all ask whatever you want to ask. <clears throat> Mark, can you give us an update on George Brown? Yeah, George. I'm not. I, I'm still waiting from Benny to tell me the final deal. But he did not practice today. Hurt his knee. I, mean, I don't even know which knee it was. To be honest with you, but uh, we're just waiting on results. And I would say pretty soon we'll be able to say what's going on with him. Just don't know yet. But he, he did not go today. And if, if he can't go, why did that? Uh, we moved DJ Scaife outside. We put DJ outside. We took Bulware and flipped him to left guard. And we moved up Cleveland Reed to right guard uh, with the two unit. Which, uh, you know, it, it might have been nice to keep Benzel there. But for Cleveland being a, just a brand new freshman trying to learn what to do, to flip him over there might have been a little tough. Assignment-wise, Bulware, he actually played a little left guard in college. In, if you don't know, you know, Benzel is a graduate transfer, played a lot of ball, so he can probably adjust a little bit better. And maybe push your hair a little bit. Um, so then uh, Dykstra ended up behind Cleveland Reed on the three unit. And I think we had uh, Kai on the right. I think we had Campbell on the left. Like I said, uh, we, had Bar, we got Barr at center. Uh, left guard, my brain, you guys might know better than me, on the threes. Um, sorry, whoever that is, and your mom. But uh, right off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of who that is. Oh, it's, uh, it's Moose. Gri Griff Griffin? Griffin. It's a walk-on kid we call Moose, so I don't know his name real good yet. But uh, anyway, that's who we got. And we're still functioning with three lines, which is good. But you, know, you get one or two more out, and then all of a sudden it's, it's tough to – Give everybody the work that they need. Mark, is it a lot tougher <clears throat> to build an offensive line uh, position? Say again, I'm sorry? Is it a lot tougher to build an offensive line position wise when you're coming into a job like this and now you're in yeah. year three, but as yeah. opposed to like your receivers? And yeah, like offensive line play takes time. It's, it's the, it is by far the biggest developmental position on the football field. In other words, um, guys rarely show up ready to go physically. Uh, and then to learn what you got to learn is very, very difficult. Next to quarterback play, it's the most difficult thing to learn. And they have to learn it in tandem. They can't, uh, it's not just, hey, I know my job. And it can't be, you know, I hear the play and I go to the line and I know my assignment. You, you start that way, but if things start moving around, linebackers start bumping here and there, got to change your calls a little bit. And usually the calls involve two people, tandems, and, instead of just one guy. So it's so much to learn, and that's why it's hard to get that continuity with, uh, with young linemen. But the great news is we, we've got some very talented young linemen in process of, of getting developed physically, mentally. Um, and I'm really, really encouraged about the future, I can tell you that. And it, well, excuse me, I will say this. The one unit, number one unit's done a really good job um, with Tyree, uh, with Jahair, and then Tyler, and then uh, it's been uh, Hayden Mahoney and 
uh, Big Navon at right tackle. It's, it's been really good because they understand what we're trying to do. They understand the calls and the checks and the, and the changes. And, um, and I, I would just say that the one unit is ready to play a game here pretty quick. Joe is here when you're getting down near the end of the season, preparing for a bowl game. People are talking about, well, we want to win the bowl game, finish strong, and build on next year. Yeah. You don't have that luxury, but is there a motivation there for – to make up for the way you, finish. you know, I don't think guys are thinking much about last year and how we finished. We'll talk about it sometimes. Uh, but really, especially in the middle of the camp, they're focusing on every day, every play mentality, really. It's, it's hot. Uh, it, it's, it's testing them physically. It's testing them mentally. Uh, the practices are at a high tempo. And that, that's what they're focused on, just trying to get, do their job and do it well, prove that they deserve to play, prove that they might deserve to start, prove that they might deserve to be on the plane when we take off here in a couple of weeks. Um, everybody's kind of at a little, little different level. Um, but there, there are moments that we'll talk as a team and we'll talk about, you know, the way we need to finish. And if you remember two years ago, my first season here, we lost a lot of really close games. And then, you know, that was kind of like the big focus is, you know, we – we got to do what it takes to win those close games. And then we did win close games last year, uh, but we didn't quite finish. We finished some games, we didn't quite finish the season. And, you know, part of it was due to a l the lack of depth on our football team. And, you know, to be real, to real, to be real with it, hopefully we're developing more depth now where that won't be as big of a problem. Coach, right, you spoke <clears> the teams unit, you were talking about just now the closeness of games and mm -hmm. how that can play a right. role in whether or not you win or lose a game. How can you say about, what do you right. say about the development of all of your special teams? Players? Right. Well, first of all, Todd Hartley heads up all of our special teams. He, he does a spectacular job. I mean, he, if he only coached tight ends, he, he, I think he'd be so bored he'd make himself crazy because he needs to be busy. And he's one of those guys that can, um, he can handle the load of a lot, the, all the tight end stuff, all the special teams. And there's six special teams. So there's a lot on his plate, but uh, he, he just has one of those brains that can handle it. And, uh, and I think he really uh, enjoys it. So he's getting everybody organized. He's doing the drill work. And he has coaches help him do everything, but he's leading the way. And uh, so it starts with him. And then, you know, we, we do, the more guys that you have that can run and cover kicks and get people on the ground or who could protect and then go cover a punt, and get guys on the ground. I mean, that's a big part of special teams, or a guy, you know, guys that could, you know, sprint backwards, get set, pick up a block, or pick up a block on a kickoff return or something like that. Um, there's a lot of that going on. Then you got your specialist, who your snapper, your holder, your kicker, your punter, you know, those guys. And uh, you know, I like what I've seen with Fiegels. I love what I've seen with Butler and his snaps. Uh, uh, Bubba had a really good day today. He struggled in the stadium. You know, was that because he was in the stadium? I don't know. I mean, it's a it's a big moment for a true freshman, just to be kicking in front of his teammates, let alone, let alone you know, in the stadium. And then uh, in 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 the AT and T stadium is going to be something different than that. So I might even let him kick the day before, just to kind of get a taste of the place, because I, I can't imagine it not being bigger than life for him and, and a lot of people. Mark, did any, did anybody in the scrimmage when you looked over the tape again? Um, I don't know if we move somebody from a backup to a starter at this point, but you know, guys are just beginning to prove that um, they're game ready. You know, like I got a lot of faith and confidence in Hightower. He's ready. I know he he might not have even caught a ball. I don't even know. Uh, but he might have got one or two. I don't, I don't remember. But when I watch him practice every day, I know he knows what to do, and I know he's a physical blocker, and he, he, he will catch the tough ball in traffic. You know, so I feel good about it. I'm getting, you know, a guy like Wiggins is getting there. You know, is he there yet? Maybe not. Of course, Hightower was here in the spring. That helped him out. Um, you know, Ezard, when Ezard figures it out, he's going to be a really good player. You know, is he ready today? Probably not. Um, but he's, he's getting there. That's why we practice. Um, Lorenzo uh, really struggled early on pass protection, learning just who to block because it's not that easy, and then learning how to do it. Uh, you know, he was getting knocked around a bunch, quite frankly. But then I saw him start, 
he picked up a blitz or two when it was physical, and he ran the ball with more power and, and finishing the runs like we finished. He, he did a couple runs like he probably did in high school where it didn't look good and he wanted to spin around and run over there and outrun everybody, and you can't do that in college. You stop and spin around, you're going to get a seven-yard loss, you know. So he's starting to learn to stick it in there and drive his feet and those types of things. I'll tell you, the guy that's really uh, probably helped himself maybe more than anybody in this camp is uh, Treyon Gray, Chalk. Uh, as a fullback, and he, he got some, some tailback reps too. Um, so, you know, he's not done playing tailback here for us. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, guys like Rousseau we talk so much about, but, you know, he, he's still what, – what, what excites you about Rousseau is that when you do your drill work and it's a pass rush, and you just see him come off the line so fast and long and athletic and you see the potential. But he's still got to learn to play the rundowns and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, he's getting better as he goes. Uh, all those young defensive linemen, I mean, uh, Nesta Silvera has got to be ready. Jordan Miller's got to be ready. Uh, Tito's got to be ready. Um, they they, they kind of don't have a choice because of our depth right now. I mean, those are just some of the names, but uh, I see our young linebacking core starting to become, you know, they're, they're, anybody who shows up are in the shadows of Shaq and Pinckney and McLeod. I mean, just they're just these bigger-than-life guys now. And uh, so you don't really think much about the second-team guys, but they're, they're quietly developing their skills, getting ready for the day that they get their, their moment. And uh, it may be, you know, on special teams this year, it may be, Snaps uh, because we sub, and it, you know, maybe, God forbid, because of an injury or something like that. But I'm feeling a lot better about, like B.J. Jennings and and Steed and, and those guys. Mark, you mentioned obviously the, the three veteran linebackers being bigger than life. Just watching their development from freshmen to where they are now. How I mean, that, that was right when you got here. What well, the first of all, they were already committed to Miami before we got here. So again, I'm gonna go back and thank the last staff for doing a great job recruiting those guys. Uh, and, and really for them to go through a coaching change in the middle of the season and not freak out and take off and go somewhere else. They, they stayed the course through the new coaching change and you know waiting and being patient and all that kind of thing. So that shows you something about their personality. Amon Rich was in the same category. Bethel, same category. Uh, there might have been a few others too. But um, <clears throat> so anyway, when they show, and they're all coming mid-year. When they show up, um, they weren't afraid to lead. And it was pretty quick that Shaq became a starter. It was pretty quick that Pinckney was playing a bunch, McLeod. Uh, I didn't see a bunch of veterans balk at the thought of Shaq being the middle linebacker for this team as a true freshman in the first spring. I think the first, by the first spring practice, I think he lined up number one that day, if I'm not mistaken. If it wasn't that first day, it was soon thereafter. And it's because he, the guy is so focused. He's on a mission. He, he's a true leader. And, uh, and, and, and Pinckney, you know, there's a lot of self-belief that these guys showed up with. And it was well-founded. Sometimes guys show up with a lot of self-belief and get knocked on their keisters, you know, and, and, and get that welcome to college football thing. And they get shook up a little bit. But those guys never did. I'm not saying they never got knocked down, because they have. But every, every man who plays football gets knocked down. But they were very confident, and uh, it was really uh, kind of crazy how fast they took over. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. Yeah, Jaron. He he is a typical freshman. Doesn't quite know what to do on every play, and of all the positions, quarterback's the one that has to process the most. And to be, you know, you are a leader. If you're a quarterback by position, you're a leader. And, you know, so you have to kind of have control of the huddle. You're trying to control yourself, let alone control the huddle and all that kind of thing. But the one thing I do love about him is that he's, he seems pretty fearless uh, in the pocket. Um, when he does get his sights on a target, he, he's not perfect by any stretch, but it, fundamentally he's very sound and he hits his target more times than not. Uh, and he's made some bad decision, thrown into a bad coverage, got thrown a ball that should have got picked or did get picked off, um, like freshmen do. But that's why you practice. You want to get all those mistakes done in practices and scrimmages and things like that. But very optimistic about his future. Mark, you talked this morning when you were on with Coach Edwards about just the maturity of the 
maturity you've seen from that entire younger quarterback? Yeah, finally. I, I was really getting frustrated with them. I mean, I mean they're, redshirt, they're freshmen and redshirt freshmen, besides Malik. So you just got a pack of them that just, uh, you know, you're kind of waiting for one or all of them to mature to the point where they, they really, I don't want to have to want it more than they want it. I don't want to have to motivate a guy to be great. I don't want to have to um, babysit him on the off the field things like, are you going to class on time? Are you being prepared in study hall? You know, are, you know the, the juvenile things that kids do in high school sometimes that bleed into college until they figure it out. I mean, I don't expect that from the quarterback position, but you know, they're human. They're like everybody else. And so uh, we've been, John and I have been hard on them. And I, I think every one of them's turned the corner. I, we're in that quarterback meeting now, and uh, everybody's focused, everybody's answering the questions, and, and even starting to ask the questions that a good quarterback will ask once he starts to figure things out. And um, again, again, in the beginning, I always teach him what you need to know. This, you need to know this to function. I, I don't really want you to try to even think about why. You have to do this. Just do this so you can get it started. And then after a while, they start learning why things happen. And before you know it, they get to be like Malik that can see something that no one else sees, make a check, throw a touchdown pass to Cager in the scrimmage like he did. It was just it was beautiful. And, uh, you know, are those guys right where he is yet? No, but they see Malik do those things, and they're like, okay, I get it. I got I to gotta study more or something like that. So much better maturity in the room right now. I think so. Uh, the number two spot. Um, in in the past, I've had actually two number twos, co number twos, and like if we get in a game and the and the it's time to put the second team guy in there, it might be one guy one week, and the next week I might put another guy in. I'm I'm considering that because I think it's that close of a competition, and you learn more in a game than you do in practice. You can practice all you want at that position, and but until you play in a game, it's hard to really evaluate completely what a guy will do. So I might do a little bit of that. Mark, you made the decision on obviously Malik being a starter. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, what, what was the conversation like before and after the season? Uh, well, you know, I, I said it was going to be wide open again. And it really it still is in, in that if Malik spits the bit and somebody just starts playing so good, I, I'm like, i got to get him in the game, you know. and. Uh, you know, it might be that I get him in a series or I might say, you know, he's taken over. But it, it's – I don't see – mostly because a guy hasn't done it before. I don't know what they're going to do in the game. I, Malik's been in a lot of big games. Malik's made a lot of big plays in big games. Malik's lived through a lot. I mean, Malik was responsible for 31 touchdowns last year. I think he's tied or broke a school record. I mean, he, he's done a lot of great things for us. And uh, in my opinion, the way he's been working and what he knows – in this system compared to the others, he's, he's just ahead of everybody. Malik's leadership ability, what can you say about that now as yeah. compared to this time last year? Well, I think Malik, I think even saying Malik's the guy helps Malik be the guy. That's another reason. You know, you want the leadership in the summer. You want the leadership going into that game. You don't want everybody to go, who's going to be the guy? Or everybody having all these opinions. Uh, and I don't care. I mean, I want you all to have whatever opinions you want, but even on the team, oh, I think it should be this guy. I think it should be that guy. I mean, everybody knows it's Malik. Everybody agrees it's Malik. And that I think that's healthy for him to be a leader. And I think it's, it's healthy for the team to know who, who's leading the way on offense right now. Coach, you have a lot of sons of dads who play here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Right. You know, when when you get to family, and anybody I ever coached, I consider family. So, you know, if I'm coaching Casey Weldon's son or or, or Jennings' son, we used to call him Monster there at Florida State. You know, um, you know, it, it's uh, it's meaningful. Number one, that a former player would would entrust his son with with me as the head coach to lead them. And uh, do I expect more from them? Uh, maybe um, I try not to. You know, I want them to. I don't want them to feel set apart one way or another because of our relationship. I want them to earn everything they get, and uh, you know, I'll I'll blast them like I will anybody else if they need it, and uh, I'll hug them around the neck too. So, but I, but it is a good feeling to have uh, former players, 
sons on, on this team because it's, it's kind of a vote of confidence that they, they believe in what, we, what we're doing and how we're doing it. Yeah, well, uh, when Irvin got hurt, when Michael got hurt, uh, Brevin became the number one F that we called. Uh, well, him and Pliny, I guess, both have been split in time, but uh, he's getting a lot of work with the number ones at the F, what we call the F position, where, where Herndon was last year. And, and uh, Mallory's more where Najoku was when, when I was using both of them at the same time. They... Um, they're talented guys that are learning fast and competing hard and and making they'll they'll be making plays from time to time where you'll you'll be like they're gonna be pretty darn good you know but again they're like for example they're they're still not physically as strong as they're gonna be one day they're freshmen strong which is not strong enough sometimes you know at the point of attack when we're talking about blocking you know but a blocker part of blocking is. You might be a Hernan who can who can really handle physically some defensive ends. And then you got the other kind of blocker that will get his hat right, get his hands right, and start energizing his feet. He may not move the guy necessarily, but when you block somebody, eventually that guy's got to go make a tackle. So I'm on this guy. I'm working him. I'm fighting like mad. You know, he's probably a little stronger than me. But when he goes to go make a tackle, that's when I can energize my feet and, and run a guy by, say, you know. So if you get your hat right and your hands right and you energize your feet and, and you just fight, you could become a pretty good blocker. But I, I would think a year or two from now, they'll be much more physical at the point of attack when it comes to blocking and even pass blocking as well. Coach, what are you seeing from Al Blades? You know what? Super competitor. Uh, I, Matt, I was talking to Coach Diaz, this, Diaz uh, this morning about him. He just was saying how much he loves – the way he, he competes, the way he loves football. Um, there's something about those guys that you just, you, again, you don't have to motivate those guys any day of the week. They can't wait to practice. They can't wait to play. He's one of those kind of guys. And when you, when you have a bunch like that, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, we got a lot of local kids uh, playing the corner, playing receiver, you know, some nice little – you know, hometown brawls going on in practice. A lot of pride with those guys competing against the guys maybe they competed in high school and that type of thing. But um, we like his skill set, obviously, or we wouldn't have brought him in. But he has a competitive spirit that it belongs to the Blade Blood family. You know, the family's the family name is being honored by how he's practicing. Coach, confidence is uh, obviously relevant. It's, it's huge. Sport. Exactly. But how do you maintain the team staying confident? Uh, we're not uh, – I think just practicing against each other helps a lot. And, and the fact that both sides of the ball are formidable in, uh, in their abilities, uh, there, there are good, healthy battles going on. And that, that helps you. Um, you know, and we do go one versus two and two versus one. So, you know, if it was one-on-ones and twos-on-twos, that'd probably be – help us – even compete harder and better to a certain degree. But um, this time of year, let's say the number one offense needs to see a look to help us get better that the defense already runs and say, hey, Mandy, can you give me one high man coverage on this play? I need, I need to see that. Yeah, no problem. Or when our number two offense is up and Manny's number one defense is up, Manny's like, hey, coach, can you run the one back power? on this play or whatever, you know. So we kind of help each other there. And if it was ones versus ones, we really wouldn't be able to do that. So that's why we do that this time of year. But um, I think just the fact that practices are highly competitive, I don't think anybody's getting a big head right now. We know we got, you know, a monster of, a, of an opener too. So we're not, we're not getting too overconfident. Let's do one more, guys. Anything else? That's, that's like 100%. <laughs> Thank you. One more and that's it. <laughs>